very nice introduction. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, sure. So this is Harrison from University of Minnesota, and I'm very glad to be here and to give a talk on recent advance in distributed non-convex optimization. So to start with, why do we need a distributed? So we know that uh, recently the number of uh, networked objects such as sensors, actuators, and controllers has been growing exponentially. And the total data sets they produced will reach uh, by uh, more than uh, 175 uh, trillion gigabits by 2025. And all these data are naturally collected and located in distributed locations. So this motivates us to consider a class of distributed methods that can handle such huge amounts of distributed data. And at the same time, all these data models are often highly complex of very large size with millions or even trillions of variables and, and with non convex objectives. For example, when we're training some deep neural networks, those, net, those uh, network parameters are highly, uh, network functions are highly uh, non convex and complicated. And this motivates us to consider the distributed non convex optimization and which can find wide application in both the machine learning and the signal processing community. For example, in the machine learning community, people usually training some deep neural network to find to fit some many popular applications. And the reason works shows that if we training the neural network using multiple machines or multiple GPUs can significantly reduce the total training time compared to the centralized training. And at the same time, in the signal processing community, uh, there's a popular uh, uh, optimization problem called distributed wind turbine optimization or wind farm problem. So basically in the wind farm, uh, we have multiple wind turbines and each turbine is a highly non-convex function. Uh, the, the output power is a highly non-convex function of the wind speed, wind direction and many different uh, complicated variables. And in the wind farm, all these different turbines are located distributedly. And if we only doing individual optimization that can be highly suboptimal. For example, if there's no coordination between the up and downstream turbines, it could cause some loose power of the downstream turbines. And that's to enable the fast and real-time coordination, the turbine has to be agreed on a set of young angles to operate in a distributed manner. And if we use the distributed non-convex optimization, it can significantly reduce uh, or improve the practical performance of the large scale wind farm. So this, okay, sure. Any questions? Okay, so, so these uh, applications uh, motivate us to consider a class of problem called distributed non convex optimization. And in today's talk, I will first provide a high level survey of recent works on this direction. And uh, next, I will give particular emphasis on how to achieve certain optimal performance for this type of problems. So to begin with, here is the distributed setting we consider. So there's a network of M agents uh, defined on a graph and they are able to interact uh, with their neighbors. And each agent has access uh, to their local function fi, which could be non-convex. And they jointly estimate a variable w by optimizing the average system performance. The graph g here can represent either the physical network or uh, some abstract network uh, where the neighbors are defined by the friendship. Compared to the centralized systems, such a distributed system can fully utilize the local computation and storage power. And compared to some parameter server setting or you call there, there's a central controller, there's no need to exchange local data uh, which can preserve the local privacy and all, also this type of decentralized setting can be more robust to individual uh, node failure. And uh, usually people, for this uh, type of distributed non convex optimization, people will usually introduce M local variables Xi and they reformulate the problem P into the following consensus problem. So eventually, if this, uh, the consensus is achieved, these two problems are actually equivalent to each other. 
And another way of reformulation is to follow in linear constraint problem, which basically uh, using a incidence matrix A to encode the network structure. And uh, the benefit of this type of reformulation is that now the objective functions now become separable, where the uh, the, the non convexity only arise in the objective functions and the linear constraint encodes the network connecti connectivity pattern. And obviously these two problems or these three problems are uh, in equivalent if the linear constraint is satisfied. So next, let's view some uh, literature on this type of problems. So there have been, actually there have been a lot of works on convex uh, decentralized organization since, uh, since 1980s. Uh, from the very beginning work and the go to the DGD, ADMM, and many organization based or some mixing based methods. And the simple yet most popular example is the decentralized gradient descent method. So to have a closer uh, look at, uh, at this algorithm is basically this one line update. So it consists of two parts. So the first part is the consensus step. So basically for each agent, they will communicate with their neighbors and doing some mixing step uh, and to making uh, some consensus on their iterates. And next, they will perform one gradient step. Uh, basically, it's a gradient descent step, but only depends on the local gradient instead of the global gradient of each agent's local gradients. And for this type of methods, uh, here the mixing matrix W actually determine the consensus speed and the constant step size uh, will only make this algorithm converge to a neighborhood of the optimality point. This is because we are using the local gradient descent instead of the global gradient descent. And then uh, as we just mentioned, there have been a lot of works on convex uh, distributed processing since 1980s. The natural question is, can we simply directly apply those existing methods to non-convex problems and be done with it? So unfortunately, it is not possible. So as this figure shows, it is very easy to construct some non convex problems such that the classical methods such as the DGD methods will diverge to infinity regardless of the parameter choice. For example, here is a very simple two node problem. And if we, no matter what parameter you choose, the DGD will diverge no matter what, what parameters. And so this fact combined with an increasing importance of the non convex problem, as we mentioned before, motivates a, a number of recent works that design algorithm to avoid these non ideal behaviors. And uh, when the problem becomes non convex, the measure of the solution quality will shift from the difference of the objective functions to the size of the grid, because for non convex, there's no guarantee that the algorithm will converge to a global mean. But we, we will show that the size of gradient is small and we show that the algorithm converts to stationary points. And the early works for this type of problems only on getting on convergent algorithm. That means there's no global rate analysis. But only recent works, uh, they were focusing on analyzing the convergence rates. For example, the DGD shows, uh, we have shown the constant step size is diverge, but people show that if we use in diminishing step size, it will achieve relatively slow rate, which is one over epsilon square. And here, this rate means uh, to reach that, to make the error driven the size of a gradient below epsilon, we need at least a one over epsilon square uh, number of iterations or number of computational uh, complexity. And the reason works on primal dual based methods are gradient tracking based methods further improve upon that rate and achieve the one over epsilon. Uh, sublinear rate. And to summarize, like the most existing distributed algorithm can be roughly divided into two families. So one is a gradient tracking based algorithm, which is directly deal with this consensus problem. And the other is a primal dual based methods, which is derived from the linear constraint formulation, which is a Q uh, problem here. And next we will get, get a closer look at these two types of algorithm and see their relations. Okay, so to begin with, let's look at the primal dual based methods. So it's focusing on this linear constraint problem and we can easily write an augmenting Lagrangian for, uh, for, for it. 
And the algorithm is very simple. So first is a primal step is basically linearize the entire AR function and plus two uh, pro approximate terms and, and do a minimization of these uh, two terms. And the due step is just a, a due gradient descent on it. And if we do some simple um, a manipulation, we can have the following equivalent form, which basically doing the updates uh, depends on two, uh, the previous two iterates. So here you see the xr plus one iterates depends on xr and xr minus one plus some gradient uh, difference. And many algorithms share a similar form of this uh, type of algorithm. So for example, cross PDA, extra idea, many, many algorithms from the optimization perspective, they share the similar forms. And uh, interestingly, if we set the dual variable equals to zero, you will find that the primal dual based algorithm is, is actually equivalent to the DGD algorithm. So the rationale is that if there's no dual update, you will see a very slow convergence rate. So this is one or epsilon square. But if you introduce, introduce a dual update, you will see the one or epsilon, which is a faster convergence rate. And another type of algorithm is the gradient tracking based methods, which basically directly solving the uh, consensus problem. And uh, based on the, that DGD is not converge or converge slowly, uh, which basically due to the inaccurate gradient estimation because we are using a local grid instead of a global grid. So the gradient tracking based methods, the idea is to introduce an auxiliary variable y to track the global information. So how to track that? So basically they introduce a y update and, and do a mixing step uh, to from the convert the local y to the global y. And also you update using the difference of the uh, local gradients. So this uh, type of algorithm can also, after some multiplication, can also convert to following equivalent form. You will see it's very similar to that of uh, to that a uh, primal dual basis method, except that uh, how do you choose the w? And here the gradient tracking do a w square here basically means it has twice a communication but for primal deal is only one times of communication. And uh, most, most of the forms are similar and also many uh, algorithms derived from the, exactly from the consensus algorithm uh, can share a similar form. For example, next PSG, DND2, many algorithms share a similar form. So in summary, for distributed problems, we have two types of algorithms. One is gradient tracking and the other is primal deal. And one is directly deal with the consensus problem, uh, which is basically the gradient type uh, step reduce the local gradient size and plus one mixing step improve the consensus. And the key in the analysis is the mixing step actually introduce a geometric shrinking of the consensus error. And for the primal dual based methods, uh, it's one primal step reduce the local gradient size and the other dual step in, improve the consensus. And the key in the analysis is to bound the, the success change of the dual variable. But however, this area, although there are many works on it, and we have a kind of uh, understanding their relations, but this area is still in its infancy. So fi many fundamental questions about the performance limits for such these problems are still left open. For example, the decentralized uh, introduce extra communication cost. But most existing works only focusing on iteration complexity uh, in which they treat the communication and the competition equally and they only uh, produce like one or epsilon iteration uh, complexity. But this is for both communication and the competition. And another point is that many important factors here are ignored uh, for decentralized optimization. For example, we do multi-agent optimization or decentralized optimization, the network is very important. How these agents are connected to each other. For example, they could be line graph, could be fully connected network, could be any random networks. But in this one epsilon rate, it, all these important factors are hiding. So how those algorithms scale with the network is unknown. 
For example, if we can give a very simple simulation of very simple example, you can show that as the number of nodes and number of agents are increasing, like from zero to 100, uh, 150, you will see the total number of uh, iteration required to reach a certain accuracy is, is, is increasing exponentially. That means the convergence rate could be slowed down very quickly for large networks, but that is not shown in that one over epsilon convergence rate. Then the natural question is, can we identify some rate optimal algorithm that shows what is the best possible network dependency uh, achievable by any decentralized algorithms and how to achieve such these optimal dependencies? So then we go to our second part, which basically study what is the best performance and how to achieve those. So the first part is uh, the lower complexity bounds, that what is the best performance we can achieve. And then let's begin our technical part and start to make things concrete. First, uh, let us uh, describe the type of problems and algorithms we are going to consider and define what do we mean by the high quality solutions. First, the class of distributed problems we will consider will take this form and we will assume that fi is non-convex and differentiable. And also we assume the Lipschitz gradient of each component function fi. And the network we are considering is a undirected and unweighted graph uh, with m vertices and e edges. And each node with some degree and we define some normalized gradient Laplacian with, uh, with using the degree and uh, using their uh, neighboring informations. And the eigengap is uh, smallest non-zero eigenvalue divided by, divided by the largest eigenvalue, which is a value smaller than one. And you will see for most, uh, most graphs, like the complete graph, this, uh, this information is just the one. But for some past graph, this information is much smaller, which is one over m squared. And later we will show that our uh, lower bounds is actually depending on this Cauchy, this Cauchy value. And you see for some graph is very sensitive to this value, but for some graph is even is not can be ignored because it's just a constant one for the complete graph. An algorithm we are going to consider is a class of distributed first order algorithms. Uh, where uh, each iteration consists of one round of communication exchange among all nodes and one round of local updates uh, per iteration. So basically it will perform uh, the following three steps. So first it will bro broadcast a vector to all its neighbors and receive a vector containing all the neighbor messages. And here Q de denotes some, could be some quantization mechanism or just uh, using, you can also treat it as the identity map uh, for simplicity. And also the second step is the compute is local gradient, like a gradient of fi evaluated on the xi. And the third step is to generate a new local estimates based on all the informations we have received so far, the neighboring information, the my local gradient, and generate my next iteration. Note that here we only use the gradient information and uh, because in this way, the computation is cheap. And then later, when we measure the computation and the communication efforts, we will count how many such kind of runs, how many such kind of runs is uh, uh, required to reach some certain accuracy. And finally, how do we measure the solution quality? So we will say uh, for the local estimates, a set of local estimates achieve high quality if every one approximate agrees on the same item estimates. And uh, that estimates approximately minimize the uh, global objectives. So that is, we want the size of the gradients are small and also the local agents are close to each other. So why this makes sense? So think about when this epsilon is just a zero, that means everything will have a exact consensus. And, the, and also that means the first order of the melody condition for the original centralized problem is achieved, okay? And this is our uh, derived lower bound. So, so basically our question becomes more concrete. So using any algorithm in class A to solve problem P, what is the smallest round of uh, communication and the communication runs 
are required to driven the our solution quality below some epsilon. So let's look at our uh, first main results. We show that for any algorithm in class A, there exists some very difficult problem in P so that to driven that error below epsilon, we need at least that many uh, communication runs, which is one over square root of C times one over epsilon. So remember the most existing works only have that one over epsilon, but they never catch rig rigorously characterize the dependency on the graph. And we show that graph is the dependency should be in the order of square root other than other dependencies. And what is Kasi? Kasi here represents how well the network is connected as we showed uh, in the previous examples. And for badly connected network, uh, that, that for such as a land graph, uh, this Kasi is small and this, uh, this parameter is large. So this makes sense because when the network is badly connected, this term is large implies that uh, we require uh, more communication to uh, reach some uh, high quality solutions. And this bound is actually one over square root because uh, it times worse than the centralized gradient descent, but it is one over square root because it times faster than the best existing decentralized uh, algorithms or decentralized upper bound. And this is for communication runs and for computation complexity runs, we have a similar result shows that the lower bound is in the order of one over epsilon, which is independent of the network. So this is also makes sense because uh, the network is, is in terms of the communication, but when you do computation, that should be independent of the network. And the second, uh, we should go to our second part that how, to, how do we define, how do we design algorithm that can be achieved those optimal uh, rates. So our algorithm design basically uh, based on two key observations. So the first observation is that uh, recall our consensus problem is separable. Where the non convexity only arises in the objective functions and the network structure only appears in the non-space constraint. And the second observation is that our lower bound is also separable where it can be factorized into the product of the one or C times one or epsilon where I'm one or square root C is the communication uh, efficiency over the network and our uh, epsilon is the computation complexity in minimizing objectives. So this motivates us to conceive, design a class of hierarchical uh, decomposition strategy, which means we decompose the communication and the computation step tags to form some nested loops. So basically for each uh, iteration, we first do one round of computation, then do multiple rounds of communications or vice versa to reach, to decompose the computation and the communication uh, tasks and to reach some optimal rates. And recall uh, what we have the, uh, introduced at the beginning, the classical methods, uh, we call the primordial based methods, how does it deal with the, this type of problems? So basically they solve the linearize the entire AR function and uh, add the two proximal terms. So, and it achieved this one, what, can see times one of epsilon convergence rate if we add that dependency to it. Mm -hmm. But why this is slow? So why this is not matching the lower bound? So this is because uh, by a linearized AL add, and adding two regularization terms, it basically imposes too much regularizations. Uh, basically the proximal terms for networks impose too much regularizations and makes algorithm very slow. The natural question, the natural solution is to remove that network proximal terms. Then the problem will become like this line. And to solve it, we can just take the derivative and set the derivative to zero and find the optimality condition. And basically to solving this is solving the following linear systems and to proceed, how do we proceed? So we just leave solving this system of equations. But to solve it, we need the inverse of this matrix R, which is basically matrix of A times uh, A, the inverse of A times A. This actually destroy the network structure and this cannot be implemented uh, distributed. So this is the reason why previous works are not doing this and they have to add that proximal terms for the network and make the algorithm slow. But to really 
get a faster algorithm, you have to do this, but it is not distributed implement, implementable. So what do we do? What should we do? So the idea is approximately solving this by using some iterative algorithm instead of, uh, instead of uh, if directly get an inversion of it. So the, the algorithm design will like, the, we first do some local grading computation and next we approximately solve the linear system using Q uh, inner steps. And the algorithm is like following. So first we initialize some uh, variables and next we do one primal step. Basically we calculate the A times A, we calculate the gradients and next, we approximately solving the inner linear systems running Q chap shift iterations to solving this Rx equals D, a linear system. And we using some, and this is actually only product, uh, product, and it is distributed implementable. I will show that later. And finally, we will run one uh, dual step. So here we have two, I have two things I want to comment. The first one is on the issue how the on the inner uh, championship iteration. So basically, the championship iteration generated iterates uh, lies in the following cryo of space. But it's basically, there's only product, a uh, product of R and D, and there's no inverse of R. And recall, R is the A times A transpose times A. Uh, basically, it is a graph Laplacian matrix. So A, the inverse of A transpose times A is not distributed implementable, but the product of A transpose times A times X can be done by performing one round of message change. So why is that? Because this is essentially my current value, the each agent's current value times its degree by minus all of its neighboring uh, information. So this can be done by one round of communication by message exchange with all its neighbors. And the second thing I want to mention is on the error uh, of the inner iteration or the chap shift iterations. That means if we running Q chap shift iterations to solving this Rx equals to D linear system, we will get some errors here, we call it uh, epsilon. And uh, to driven this epsilon uh, below some uh, uh, ve uh, vector uh, eta, we actually only require the Q iteration proportional to the log of eta and the log and the square root of that one over uh, C. So this is a very important observation because the first relation is that the, the, this iteration is proportional to the square root of one over C instead of the one over C. Mm -hmm. So this is essential for the optimal performance. And the second relation uh, by is by properly choosing the eta, we can show that epsilon can be bound by the difference of the iterates. This means we only require finite number of Q inner iterations for each outer iteration, which is independent of the epsilon. So we don't need the inner solution uh, to be uh, like increasing like infinite number of inner iterations, but we only using a fixed number of inner iterations, then the inner solution could be get better and better as the outer iteration converge. So this makes uh, the algorithm more practical because we are only using a fixed number of uh, inner iterations. So this then we goes to our uh, upper bounds of all the convergence results. We show that our algorithm converge in the rate of the square root of one over epsilon and times one over C. So this is exactly our lower bound matching the square root dependency on the network. So by summary, so we can show that for distributed optimization, we basically have two axes. So one is the computation, the other is the communication. So for centralized gradient descent, there's no communication because we only have one machine. And the lower bound and optimal algorithm shown is the one or epsilon convergence rate. But for decentralized uh, methods, all the existing methods, uh, they, they, re they have to require the communication, both communication and the computational uh, complexity. And they treat the communication and computation equally. So they both require one or epsilon convergence rate. And if we add a further dependency on the network, 
they will have a one or a C dependency on that. But what we show in the lower bound should be have an actual dependency. Uh, the, the dependency should be one over square root of C uh, for the communication. And for computation, that dependency should be independent of the network. So you see the red point is the actual lower bound, but that red point, that, that, that uh, red point is the, for the, the most existing works. They are far away from the lower bound and the existing works. And our proposed algorithm exactly can match the lower bound and further improve the most existing works on that. So the numerical results shows that for quadratic, like a counter example, uh, the proposed algorithm is uh, compared uh, with the, for the left figure, the proposed algorithm compared with the state of art non-convex algorithm and convex methods. So obviously we can observe that uh, convex methods are non-convergent for the non-convex problems and the proposed algorithm are much faster than those of a state of art and non-convex methods. And also uh, for the right hand side, look at the performance of the algorithm when we scale up the network size. Oh, yeah. Clearly when we increase up to 150 nodes, the total communication runs required scales linearly for the proposed methods, which is right, but scales quadratically for the uh, traditional methods. So when the problem becomes large, the benefit is clear here. And also we uh, show uh, results on a binary distributed binary classification problem, which is also non-convex. And we can see for, for classical methods like primordial or gradient tracking, like all these methods, they are much slower than our proposed methods, uh, which is the right one is ours. And you see the outer iteration is the computation complexity and the inner iteration is the total iteration is the communication complexity. You see both the computation and communication, our methods are much faster than more, all the existing uh, state of art methods. Okay, so then uh, we have seen like uh, how do we achieve the optimal rates and how do we achieve like best, best performance we can do for these type of problems. And then next we'll see some open problems or some recent developments for this problem. So after now we only discuss about the uh, deterministic problem where it means uh, we based on the accessibility of the full local gradient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed the optimal rate in terms of the network dependency and the communication complexity. But for many problems, they are naturally stochastic. For example, the local cost function could be depends on some data samples. For example, if for each agent, they have K data samples. So when you take a local gradient Fi, you, you essentially evaluate the gradient on K uh, small gradients, right? Then if K is very large, for example, millions or trillions of samples, that full local gradient is computational expensive. And also some local functions are even depends on some distributions. This makes the full local gradient is no longer available. So this motivates us to consider some stochastic methods and to seek some optimal rates in terms of the computation complexity inter instead of the communication complexity. So this is our original figure like shows uh, what we have done for the deterministic problem. But as we have shown, there is possible that each agent have a K dependency on the total number of samples of each agent. And if that K is large, K should be, if in case of that K is greatly uh, larger than the one over epsilon, K will be the dominating factor so this motivates a class of stochastic methods, for example, the stochastic gradient descent methods. For centralized stochastic gradient descent methods, each time X process one data sample, but in treat of, uh, in treat of the K factor, they eliminate that K factor, but they, but they have a kind of slower convergence rate, which is one over square, uh, one over epsilon square. But in the case of K is very large, this uh, SGD could be faster than the gradient descent method. And what about decentralized problems? So there are some uh, works like showing like we can run in stochastic, decentralized stochastic methods also and achieve the similar rate 
compared to that 3D, which is the one over epsilon square, but also depending on the uh, graph, dependence is also one over uh, C. And uh, the question is, can we further improve this epsilon square rate? Like, uh, and the, can we do that? So, so our uh, recent work shows that uh, we can further reduce that dependency, which we reduce the communication runs from epsilon square to epsilon, which is match the centralized bound. And we also can reduce the computational complexity from epsilon square to epsilon to the power of 1.5. But our dependency is also under one over epsilon. And we show, uh, and for some cases that, for example, the, the fully connected network or for some uh, uh, well-connected network, that dependency could be just a constant dependency. So in that case, uh, uh, this kind of acceleration is, uh, well, uh, is much better than the uh, de deterministic methods we have shown before. But in some cases that the network is more important, but the data sample is smaller, we should also use the deterministic methods. So the natural question is, can we like combine this type two uh, methods when X filter and D get to get some uh, optimal, uh, both optimal in both graph dependency as well as uh, the sample complexity. So this is actually unknown and this uh, left as some open questions. Okay. And uh, in summary, so the area of decentralized uh, non causal optimization is still very new. And up to now, we only talk about some first order methods and the uh, high order methods could possess several ni very nice features. For example, you can avoid or diminish the need for hyper hyperparameter tuning and it can take advantage of distributed computing environments. And then the question is how do we utilize those high order information in distributed methods? It's also still unknown problems. So overall the takeoff, uh, takeaway message is that distributed non uh, optimization is not scary and it is possible to distributed compute some high quality solutions using some property design algorithm we, uh, to achieve some optimal computation, communication, and sample complexities. And our working goal is to achieve some better understanding uh, towards the decentralized non-commerce optimization. So thank you.